I'd be willing to bet that if it wasn't for this genius idea, you and me would most likely be somewhere wrapped around a tree right now. Hey folks, we're back again with another video, and this is a continuation of our new frame build series. Today we're going to be completing the headset on this frame, all right? This is a very easy job, but many people make some big mistakes when getting this job done. Personally, I think there's a lot of bad information out there, which is one of the biggest reasons they make those mistakes. So hopefully in this video, you get a better idea how to give yourself the most amount of options moving forward when it comes to setting up your bike in general. And believe it or not, a lot of it starts here, especially with modern bikes that have really long reaches, okay? So we will go over all those details in this video, but first let's get into parts and tools that you will be needing for this job. As for parts and tools, the most important tool on this table, right here, safety glasses. We're dealing with either metal or carbon shavings. You do not want to get anything in your eyes, all right? So make sure you wear your safety glasses. So for starters, we're going to have to cut the steerer tube to length. Now, I like using a pick to mark the steerer tube. You could use a pencil. Pens usually don't work all that well. So I just like using a pick. You could use a measuring tape if you want to measure parts and pieces or a caliper in order to come up with a total length. Very easy to do. We'll explain that later. But ultimately, I like using a pick, right? Now, you have two options for actual cutting. You could use a pipe wrench cutter, a pipe wrench cutter, a pipe cutter. I'm not a big fan of using it. I don't feel too comfortable cutting steer tubes with this thing. You can't do it, obviously, a bigger one than this. It's just a little small one. My bigger ones are at another location. But I like using saws, right? And if we're going to use a saw, we're going to need a vise and a guide. There's multiple guides out there. You don't have to spend money on this one. This one's for both carbon and metal blades. So, but you will be needing some type of guide and a saw. Ultimately for saw, again, for a metal steer tube, we need a regular metal blade. The high, in my opinion, the higher the tooth count, the better. So 24 at a minimum. If you have a carbon steer tube, do yourself a favor and use a carbon blade to cut it. Now, if you're going to cut a carbon steer tube, no matter what type of blade you use, don't mess around. Make sure you absolutely wear a mask and a good one, not a crappy one, and gloves. Why? When you cut carbon, it literally creates like little spikes shavings. You can't see them and they stick into your skin. Even though you can't see them, they will be there and you will not be able to wash them out all that easy, guys. So the last thing you want to do is breathe that stuff in. You don't want to be that guinea pig that turns out five, six, ten years down the road that carbon was bad for you and you shouldn't have breathed it in, all right? So make sure you protect yourself. Wear a mask whenever you cut carbon. Goggles, mask, and wear gloves. Because like I said, when you cut it, those shavings are all that dust and residual that comes out will get stuck on your skin and you're not going to be able to take it off that easy. Putting your hands under a sink will not take them off. It's going to take some time to shed all that stuff off, all right? So if you're cutting carbon to make your life easier, what you can do is take some tape and put it around the cutting area. This way, a lot of those fibers will stick on that tape and make it a little bit cleaner to cut through, okay? So just an FYI on that one. So after we cut the post, we're going to want to, well, shave off the ends of the post. You could use sandpaper, you could use a file, or you could use one of these guys over here. Oh my God, I forgot the name of it. And basically, you know, clean the inside and the outside of the steer tube. Then when we're all set, we need to put the star nut back in. Ultimately, I got this tool. This is one of those park tools that's actually super solid. I love this tool. Many different versions. You don't have to spend the money on this one. Don't go too cheap. You could buy a good star setting tool for real cheap these days or just go to your local bike shop, worst case scenario, so they can put it in, right? And you're going to need a hammer with the tool to put it in there. Now, we are going to need the remainder of the headset. We already went through a video as far as putting in the cups. Now it's time to put in the bearings and the caps and we tie it all together and you need a lot less grease than you think you do. And that's one of the mistakes a lot of people do when putting this stuff in and we will go over that later, all right? Well, with that being said, let's get into installing and finishing up the headset. The first part of this job is to figure out how much of the steer tube we need to cut. Ultimately, we will need the complete steer tube package for your bike, which includes the remainder of the headset, 
your stem and any spacers. Now this is where a lot of people make a huge mistake, cutting the steer tube too short. A lot of people want to make it more streamlined looking and ultimately end up using only the headset plus the stem and then they cut it right at the top of the stem. And that's a huge, huge, huge mistake. You just literally eliminated all your options as far as adjustments for comfort for your whole bike by doing that, okay? Modern bikes today are a lot longer and a lot slacker than they ever were before, okay? And the reality is that extra reach that a lot of these bikes have won't work for a lot of people out there with the stem slammed all the way to the base of the headset. That's where spacers come in. When you add spacers, you are literally shrinking your reach. In other words, you're able to bring your bars further closer to you. You could also do that with a stem, but with stems, you're limited to how close you could bring it. So give yourself the option on a brand new frame to test out different heights and different reaches to figure out what is the most comfortable for you. Be patient. Don't just assume right away. A lot of people buy these new frames and they're like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I don't like it, yada, yada, yada. That's because they didn't test different heights of their stem in order to adjust different reach lengths to figure out if they could find a setting that makes the most sense for them. Again, a bike frame is a system and it all works together in order to create the best setup for you, but you are responsible for putting the time in in order to figure that one out. Now, if you limit yourself to adjustments, well, you just screwed yourself. So that's the number one reason why you don't want to cut a headset too short. Two, let's say you don't like the fork that you have. Let's say you want to change forks and you want to sell the fork. If you cut this headset too short, there are no standards here. Different bike companies have different headset or head tube heights. If you cut your steer tube too short, ultimately you might not be able to sell your fork. It might not work for the majority of people out there. So you always want to give yourself extra space. Now, personally, I give myself at the beginning a lot of extra space and we're gonna go into that right now. So as I mentioned before, we're gonna need all parts to the entire headset, which includes the race. Now I already put a video out there as far as how to install a race, so I'm gonna make this one short. This is a Cane Creek 110, my favorite. Ring races I prefer over split rings personally, right? I'm gonna put it on there. Cane Creek has a tool to install it because it has different seals. It has bottom seals and side seals. So your bearing at the bottom is completely sealed, which is a beautiful thing. I love this race. I'm gonna put the tool on there and then I'm gonna grab the headset tool. Hopefully you can see this. I might have to go further out. Let me get away from the frame. And now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna knock it in there. All right, so boom, boom, and boom. Did that do it? Oop, I'm close, a little bit more. Get away from the frame. There we go, a little bit hard holding it by hand and we are in, okay? So step one is done. Now for step two, we need to install all the parts. So in this case, and this isn't a permanent install right now, again, we're just going to measure how much of the steer tube I wanna cut, right? So I'm gonna put my bearing in the bottom and I'm gonna put top stack on. I'm not worried about aligning anything. I just wanna make sure my bearing's sitting in there. I wanna make sure the top half of the headset's sitting in there, right? And then, I'm going to take my steer tube or my fork, put it all in. Now, these guys have a seal on top, so it's a little bit stiff, and I'm gonna push it in all the way, all right? Next, we install the stem and the spacers, and this is the big one, it's the spacers, right? So most people, a lot of people, I don't know about most, but a lot of people will basically put their stem and then they will mark it, cut it a little bit shorter, and that's it, right? They think they're done. And ultimately by doing this, especially if it's a brand new frame for you, you are doing yourself a complete disservice. You completely eliminate any possibility of adjusting in order to find a more comfortable position if needed, right? So what I do, at a minimum, I will put in a 20 millimeter spacer, okay? 20 millimeters should be more than enough to figure out a range that will be the most comfortable for you, right? Ultimately, again, when putting in spacers, we are reducing reach. On average, it's a three to one ratio, give or take, depending on the head tube angle. In other words, for every three millimeters up, 
we are moving one millimeter in. So 10 millimeters up is about three to four millimeters in, depending on the angle. 20 millimeters up is double that, right? So about six to eight millimeters closer to the C. So again, super important that you give yourself that flexibility when it's a brand new frame, all right? Now, what I will also do at first is add in an additional 10 millimeter stem. The reason I do this, if I was to add in a 20 millimeter stem and then a 20 millimeter spacer, and then add in the stem and then cut, cut it shorter in order for, in order to be able to uh, lock everything down, I'll get into that in a bit. Then let's say something happens where I, this stem won't work for me. I need to go for a shorter stem, a longer stem, whatever the case is. Well, there is no standard for stem heights. All of them are a little bit different. So when it's a brand new frame, I want to give myself at first the most flexibility possible as far as options, okay? So if I allow for an additional few millimeters up here, well, that means that gives me the ability to potentially change a stem in order to, well, find one that makes the most sense for me, okay? Again, this is a long-term thing, guys. I highly recommend you put time to find your overall comfort level. Do not expect a bike to fit you perfectly. These are general dimensions for average sizes. Ultimately, it's up to you to figure out what's the most comfortable size. Give yourself the option to do so, all right? So to make my life easier right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these two stems. I'm never gonna use 30 millimeters. Reality is you should never have to go above 20 millimeters, right? If you need to go higher than that, then just get higher rise bars. Ultimately, the extra 10 millimeters is only to have an option at first for a different stem in case a newer stem has a thicker height, okay? So I'm gonna take this stem, I'm gonna slide it in there now. And what I'm gonna do, hey, there it is. I'm gonna grab my pick, make sure it's all compressed. I'm gonna grab my pick and I'm gonna put a score mark right there at the top. All right, more than enough. Now we take it all apart and we start cutting, all right? So there's the mark that we made right there, right? Now we do not wanna cut to that mark. Why don't we wanna cut to that mark? Because this is the cap, the top cap. The cap's not gonna be sitting on the steer tube. It's gonna be sitting on the spacer first or your stem, depending on what you do, right? Now, ultimately, you wanna give some room between the actual steer and the cap. You do not want it to be flush, all right? So ultimately, this is the space over here that we are right there that we are trying to cover, right? So if I measure it, it's gonna be over, typically it's usually about a little under two millimeters, right? So in this case, about 1.26 millimeters, give or take, right, total. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it three millimeters to be safe. More than enough room for any cap to sit comfortably and allow enough tension to compress everything together, right? So three millimeters is a good ballpark and that's where I'm gonna stick them. I'm gonna use my caliper instead of my measuring tape because right now my good measuring tapes are not here and I have the worst measuring tape in the world here right now. So what I'm gonna do is eyeball it. Don't have to be perfectly precise, but right there. Okay, there we go. That is my new mark. Next, what we wanna do is line up that line to this guide, okay? So we're gonna take them, we're gonna put them in. This might take a little bit of trial and error. Right now I got a camera in front of my face, so it's a little hard to see it. But that should be it right there, I think. Unless my eyes deceive me. Ooh, my eyes deceive me big time. I gotta go way back, what's going on here? I messed up by so much. Okay. Ooh, just a touch more. Touch more this way. All right. Yep, that was it. So now I am on the money, all right? Now when it comes to sawing metal, 
with a hacksaw, do not rush it. Put force one way and then just let it gradually come back. Don't try and saw both ways. Take your time. The slower, the better, because if you do it slowly, it will more smoothly finish it off as well with less deburr or less burrs on it, right? So another thing that I will say, although over here it's very difficult for me because of this whole contraption, use two hands, one in the front, one in the back, okay? So I'm gonna start sawing in again, slow motions, right? Just like that. Now, usually what I would do actually is have a vacuum over here, but I don't want to blast your ears. For metal, we don't have to worry about it all that much. Metal's heavy, it will fall down. For carbon fiber, wear your mask, wear your glasses, wear gloves, and use a vacuum if you have a vacuum, okay? Do not be the test case that proves that carbon fiber is bad for you down the road. So again, nice, even strokes, take your time. There is no rush here. Six hours later. Now we're getting to the end. At the end, don't rush it. Do very slow, light strokes in order to cut it, even, cut it evenly without leaving an extra edge sticking out from the tube. Again, very light strokes. There you go. Look at that. Nice and clean. That is nothing but, well, we got a bit over here, but at least it's not on the other side. All right. So that is nice and clean. I'm going to clean this up with vacuum quick, quick, and then we will get back to finishing this up. I vacuumed up as much as I could for now, right? Now, before we take him out, what we are going to do is take a damp cloth like a bundle of dank cloth and put it at the bottom. All right. We do not want metal shavings coming out that side right now on a finished fork. And I should have taken off the bearings now that I think about it. So, uh, yeah, that was dumb, but what are you gonna do? Now, what I'm gonna do is take off, remove the fork. There's still some shavings on there. Just leave them on the side. One detail over here. If you're gonna use a vise to do shock work, fork work, as far as servicing goes or any kind of work, clean the metal shavings off the vise. Grab a damp cloth and make sure you get all the metal shavings. Damp cloth is super important over here. We do not want any of these shavings ever falling into anything that we service. All right, so do yourself a favor, pay attention to it now as opposed to forgetting about it and potentially servicing your fork or shock or dropper down the road. And next thing you know, you have a problem on your hands. Next, what we're gonna do is, I should have removed this bearing before I did all this, but at this point, no, there's no way any, any filings fell near the bearing. So what we're gonna do is clean the top of the tube. Oops, okay. And then just to be safe, we're gonna take our bearing, we're gonna remove it because what we still have to do now is clean the edges. And that's where this tool comes in. You go buy them on Amazon for like, I don't know, eight bucks, 10 bucks, or you could use a file or sandpaper in order to clean the edges, right? This guy, uh, he just makes them a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is point them down. Don't point them this way, point them down frontwards. And basically we're just looking at deburring the edges. All right? And do both the inside edge and the outside edge. Fortunately, right now, there we go. Nice and smooth. Make sure you don't feel anything rough. Grab our towel again. Now, if you remember, we had put a damp cloth on the inside. What we're gonna do is take this guy, I put a little bit too much actually. And this guy keeps on popping out. And we're gonna try and force him down. Actually, I put way too much cloth in there. Great. I took out some extra paper towel and now I'm going to take a dowel and I'm going to push them all the way through and that should have removed yep that totally removed any 
filings that were in there. We are 100% clean. Let's clean the edges, test it. We are nice and perfectly smooth. And that's it. Now we put it on the bike and put it all together. All right, time to put everything back together. And first we are gonna start with installing the star knot. All right, so I like this Park Tool star knot installer. This is a really solid gray tool. It makes it very easy. Basically what I do is take the star nut and I screw it all the way into the base. Just like that, make sure it's all the way into the base. Now, before we pound the star nut in, what we are going to do is take a damp towel and put it at the base because metal filings are gonna to wanna to come out, okay? So we're gonna try and stop them and collect them on a damp cloth. Now, I take my star nut tool, I put it in, I sink it, and basically hammer this guy down until he is flat with a mallet. Just like that, and I know he is perfectly set in. Take him, unscrew him out. Mm. Mm. And we are perfectly in. All right, now, remember before I mentioned that there's gonna be shavings, we're gonna take out our damp cloth, bring it to the base, tap it, and pull it out. And there's all our metal shavings. Take a look inside, make sure there's no shavings in there. And there are one little shaving, that's all there is. Two little shavings, there they are, all right? I'm just gonna go get those with my fingers. I will be back. Next, what we're gonna do is prep the bearings, right? Now, this is a stainless steel bearing. It does not need grease. Now, this is another big mistake that a lot of people make. They put way too much grease on their bearings, right? So, if you have a non-stainless steel bearing, you just need to put a thin, thin, thin coat of grease around it. People put way too much grease. I've seen this so many times, and what happens, so much dirt collects on the bearings that every time that you turn, that dirt will just keep on grinding and grinding at these seals. I have literally seen bearings fall apart when removing a fork from a headset, okay? That's because the seals were so torn up from all the dirt that collected because of all the grease, well, it basically just destroyed the bearing. You do not need to put a lot of grease on it, just enough to help with potential corrosion for non-stainless steel bearings. For stainless steel bearings, you really don't even need it, okay? You can just put a little bit of grease around the seals. These won't corrode. So, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fork. We're gonna have to put the bearing on it, make sure it's clean. There's no metal shavings on the race. Flat side down, taper side up, all right? So then, we are gonna take our upper bearing. Now remember, do not over grease it. Just a thin layer if you have non-stainless steel bearings. Taper it side down, okay? So we're gonna take the steer, put them all the way in, sink them in, make sure he's sitting nicely in there. And in my case, I'm gonna take the top cap. Now, this has an emblem. I want the Cane Creek to stick to, to show at the front, right? So I'm gonna try and straighten out the fork best I could, perpendicular to the frame, right? And try and get that cane creek in the middle for now. We could have sort of adjust it later, but doing it now will help you later. Then I'm gonna grab this little seal, put it on top. Now, I am not gonna start at the base with my stem. I'm gonna start with a 10 millimeter spacer because I know that this reach on this bike at its base is a little too long for me. By adding a 10 millimeter spacer, I'm gonna bring it back about four millimeters, actually a little less than that, right? So we're gonna start from there. Then I'm gonna take my stem and I'm gonna put it on, even though this one's temporary. This is a 50 millimeter, I think. I'm probably gonna end up, I wouldn't be surprised with a 40 on this bike. So, but it all depends. Again, these new geometries are way different than anything before. So, now I have my 20 millimeter. Seems excessive, but this is all temporary, guys. I'm gonna ride like this for a few months testing out different heights until I feel a complete comfort. And then when I'm all done, I'm gonna go back and trim it down a bit. I'm not gonna cut it too short. 
you always want to stay around 100 millimeters total, right? Because that makes it, well, much easier to sell the fork. If you want to get rid of it, it'll be more universal, right? So, but for now, I'm going to start off here. And who knows, I might end up just replacing the 10 with a 20, or I could go to 15, I could go down to five. I have no idea, but most importantly, I have the option now to adjust as is needed. So then we're gonna put our tap, top cap. Great. Like I said, we're gonna put our top cap in, all right? Now, here is another mistake that a lot of people make. This top cap has nothing to do with keeping your fork assembly intact. All this thing does is create preload on your bearing, on your bearings. You want enough pressure where you're not over pressuring the bearings, but you're not under pressuring them where the whole steering, the whole steer knocks. Okay. Now this is going to be harder to test this here. Ultimately, in the end, when we're done building the whole bike, we will test this and make sure it's set appropriately. But at a minimum, what you're looking for is where, see that's knock in there? I could feel it. I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit more. Like I said, you should not need to put a lot of pressure on this guy at all. A lot of people put way too much pressure. Another reason why they destroy their bearings, all right? So right now, that's feeling good. He is not knocking. Well, when the wheel's on and he's on the ground, we will test him out later one last time. Basically, what keeps all this tight together is your stem. We are screwing, we are preloading this and then we're locking it, the whole system down with the stem bolts and that's what keeps it, that's what stops it, I should say, from moving up and down. Well, that's it, folks. Like I said, this is a simple job, but the reality is many people make a lot of mistakes and the three big, three, three big mistakes they make. One, they cut their tube too short. Do not cut your tube too short. Who cares what it looks like, guys? This is about you. This is about figuring out what the best setup for a frame is for you, where you ride, how you ride, being as comfortable as possible, as reactive as possible. So who cares what other people think for now, right? Give yourself the option to adjust and try it. Don't just try one height and that's it. Move it around. You will be surprised how much of a difference the smallest of measurements makes with uh, the front end of a bike when it comes to overall comfort and control of your bike. Two, do not put too much grease on your bearings, man. I've seen so many bearings destroyed. Well, I'm not talking about thousands, but more than enough to know that you do not need to put too much grease on your bearings and get a really good race. Like these 110 races rule, in my opinion. And three, and this is another big one, don't over tighten your top cap. This is nothing more than a preloader. It has nothing to do with keeping everything together. What keeps it all together is your stem. This is what locks it all down after you preloaded it correctly. All right. So guys, if you like the video, please click the like button, click the subscribe button to see more videos, click the bell button, what ding, in order to get notified when new videos get released and more videos are coming, all right? Until then, I hope all is well with all of you and we will be talking to you soon. Have a good one, bye.